I think that the, the iPhone Pro was actually a really interesting camera. What, do you, I mean, you obviously agree the iPhone. Well, 11. I have the iPhone 11. Yeah. I don't have the Pro version. I, yeah. Mine just has the two cameras. It has yeah, the same uh, wide cameras, angle though, the without the telephoto. Yeah, it just doesn't have the telephoto, yeah. but otherwise it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. I really, I like to me, that's one of my mm. favorite cameras, the iPhone camera. Like, it's always yeah. in my pocket. I use it all the time. I use the video functions to record my, my kiddo all the time. Like, I use it to, 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 capture life so in a way it's like a it's like a recording device like for so i can remember things but at the same time like it's one of the most used cameras that i have i don't use it as much for artistic purposes though it's more for yeah. document yeah i think it's it's really interesting that this camera on the iphone uh, 11 and 11 pro is so so good like you've never had a camera this good and as many options in the in any other cell phone before, and yeah. the colors are amazing in the iPhone 11 Pro and uh, it iPhone good. 11. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, and I'm surprised because like when I first got it, I thought like when you would swap between cameras, you would notice, and sometimes you do like you'll you'll notice it kind of jitter between two, but it's pretty fluid overall. And yeah. also, I didn't realize that I wanted that wide of an angle on that kind of like on my phone. I didn't realize I wanted it until I had it. And yeah. then now that I have it, I find myself using the wide angle camera a lot, nice. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I, I mean, I will say about the, that wide angle camera, I wish it was uh, F 2.0 instead of uh, F yeah, 2.4. There's a 2, 2.8. 2.8, 2.4. It's not F2 though. No. Yeah. I think yeah, it's 2.8. So I think that they're saving that for this next year. They'll probably, um, you know, open up the aperture a little bit. If, if I, think I had it's a to guess, twenty-six millimeter. But it's still, so yeah, it's still really cool that you can get that perspective. And for like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, and it really opens up a new form of photography for people who have been shooting on iPhones forever. Right. So they've never got that that wider angle. They've never uh, been able to see that. And you don't even have to move. You just press it on the screen, and they're like, oh, this is how like this looks wide. And so maybe it'll get more people into using wide angles or. You know, yeah. just um, a new thing. But yeah, people kind of became more savvy to telephoto photography and bokeh and stuff when the iPhone uh, X came out or iPhone uh, Plus series, and uh, they were able to add the bokeh. Yeah, effect. that's kind of interesting because like yeah. you wouldn't, you you kind of think like this kind of photography being so computerized in a yeah. in a can in a phone and the, being ha had by so many people would like in a way cheapen photography and make it less accessible. But if they kind of are interested in that look and that aesthetic, then it makes our jobs more important yeah. to them. Like and it makes uh, us more, more prevalent. Yeah. Nowadays, if you're starting out or you just uh, are posting to Instagram, basically, so if you're not posting uh, big high-res photos or hoping to get them um, right. printed or anything, yeah. then, man, why not? Why not just buy an iPhone Pro, edit it in Lightroom Mobile, and freaking blog? And you Dude, have three. You can make a website. You on have your three phone lenses now. all the time. Yeah. Like, you you could literally have just one, one device, and you could shoot over and over again, and you know you could make amazing results with uh, with those cameras. I mean, I've been through phases where I've shot um, tons and tons of cell phone photos, and you know I love the Mastin Mastin Labs app too. Mm -hmm. That was a really great uh, app for editing and stuff, yeah. and you can really make great results and. If you really want to kind of dial it in and, you know, if you want to shoot raw, you can shoot raw on Lightroom Mobile and then yeah. um, do all that. But then the iPhone also has a bunch of computational photography features that if you shoot Right, so that's app, some stuff that you could do that's outside of the realm of, like, a yeah. pro camera. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the iPhone iPhone series right now is actually doing more than a lot of pro cameras as far yeah. as, like, not blowing highlights and stuff. Well, like, they have a lot more... Yeah computer power in them you know what i mean like the yeah. processors and iphones are yeah. way faster than I, I've watched these videos. cameras yeah i've watched these videos of uh this guy shooting a canon 5d4 uh next to an iphone 11 pro and he's like shooting it and the sky is completely blown out you can't even see anything and then you take the iphone um, 11 pro and then he actually gets a better result for instagram like you can't really tell on instagram how much resolution is there or whatever mm -hmm, right. just by shooting one one frame with with that i mean you could do an hdr blend you could uh underexposed, bring up the shadows um, on that, but yeah. it's a lot of extra work. And so if you're beginning, then it's almost like a better option just to shoot on your phone, have this one awesome all-in-one device where you can blog, uh, share your photos on Instagram and edit and all that stuff. People can even edit 4K and video And you can on learn those three different perspectives. So like you could like, maybe you don't know exactly what millimeters they are and you don't care. You're just like, I either shoot wide, I shoot mm -hmm. normal, or I shoot telephoto. And if you got really good at, at that inside of your camera, you could then apply that to a, a pro camera system later and just totally understand it. You know what I mean? Like it would just translate well. So I feel like the iPhone 11 was definitely one of the best cameras of 2019 for sure. Yeah, I love the focus on the cameras and uh, 
yeah, I think it just makes a lot of a lot of sense for Apple to do that right yeah. now. There wasn't too image many... stabilization in it too. It's just phenomenal. Like on the video, oh yeah, like I can run yeah. around with my kid and it doesn't look like the Blair Witch Project. You know, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> this is really helpful. You know, yeah, but but yeah, the, I mean. If you're starting out in photography, you should definitely uh, go go buy the um, the iPhone 11 Pro yeah, yeah. or iPhone 11. Or even the 11. Yeah, if you're, just if you're not if you're like, not into that kind of contrived headshot look, I think like I, I've noticed a lot of like Instagram influencers, right? They're uh, shooting more on like the the wider lenses in the iPhone, and they're uh, not shooting like more like like headshotty type stuff with bokeh. Yeah, more like, about the scene yeah, and like trying to make yeah. cool compositions. Yeah, if you're just shooting for for Instagram and you want some, you don't want anything like kind of that looks overproduced man it's just it's great you know you don't have to go buy you know a 35 millimeter and and um a camera you know so yeah exactly this was a clip from the full photo footage podcast please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and we will see you every sunday for a new podcast every sunday new podcast subscribe now thank you very much <laughs> thanks <laughs>